we'll start the class with uh, prayers. Oh. 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 Sahana Babato, Sahana Obunakto, Sahadiriam Karababa Hai, Tejaswina Vadita Mastoma Vidishaba Hai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So welcome to our class on Sat Darshanam. And uh, we are starting this class today and uh, this will go on for maybe six to eight sessions or 10 sessions, I don't know, as it depends on how fast we go through these verses. So this text called as Sat Darshanam is a Vedantic text and it consists of 44 verses. It's written by a Rishi called as Bhagwan Ramana Maharishi. For those who have come here for the first time, Just to introduce you to these type of classes, these classes are being held uh, on Wednesdays, primarily for advanced students of Vedanta. And on Saturdays, we have classes on Bhagavad Gita. That is for beginners. I have taken before Ramana Maharishi's Upadesha Sara. There are some videos available with us of the previous classes of Upadesha Sara. If somebody is interested, you can write to us. We will send you the link. And when it comes to uh, this particular text by Ramana Maharishi, it is a, a beautiful text. And to give you a short introduction of Ramana himself, he was born in 1879. He lived for 70 years in India. And he is a Rishi of our times. That means of these ages and where we are living. So he is not a old, very old uh, teacher of Vedanta, like Vichara Sagara was about 100, 100, 100 years old. 150 years old. I took the Vichara Sagara the last the, uh, in the previous sessions. And then we get several Upanishad teachers uh, who were all very ancient teachers. So the text we are taking is of a modern age of a person who has understood the Vedanta and understood it, realized it, and he has his teaching. So very rare to find a teacher like Ramana Maharishi. He was a liberated Hindu sage and he lived in South India in a city called Thiruvannamalai. This uh, place is famous in the Indian tradition where there was very old sage, in the olden times a lot of sages had lived there and meditated there. They say, at least it said, that there are 63 Nayanars who had lived there and meditated. And it's a very, that's why it gets a special significance. That particular hill uh, gets a special significance, the Thiruvannamalai hill. And it is said that 
uh, at the age of 16, Ramana Maharishi had a realization of the self, almost a near death type of a, a state of mind, where he realized Ishwara, where he realized God, where he realized that there is something which is totally different than the waking world which we all experience. It is a very similar state which is described in the Upanishads of a person of realization called as Thitta Pragna, the Bhagavad Gita language for a, medita for a liberalized soul is Thitta Pragna. Pragna means consciousness and Sthita means steady. A person who has a steady flame of consciousness is called as Sthita Pragna. And Ramana was very, very famous because he introduced to us a path called as the path of self-inquiry, which became very, very famous for the realization of the essence of the Upanishads. And it has been said that many a times seekers would just go and sit around him and they were totally mesmerized. They were totally, could get the vibrations of Ramana in them. And whatever questions they had in their mind would get resolved just by sitting around with him. There are several books written on uh, this path of self-inquiry called as Who Am I? You can find them in the, in the, uh, in the internet. And uh, this path goes together with bhakti, which is devotion. And it's a path which realizes the self in us and the path says you surrender to that self the essence in you very unique path a very direct path and according to ramana marishi he says all of us the moment we get up in the morning the first thought which we get is called as the i thought in sleep, we don't have the I thought. When we get up in the morning, the first thought is the I thought. When we get this I thought, then the other thoughts of the world, of the body, of what we need to do, everything starts coming in our mind. So this I thought is the object of inquiry in this text. What is the source of this I thought? Ramana says the source is Atma. Atma means the self in all of us. And the more I see this Atma, the I in me, the more I will be able to accept that this pure consciousness, the pure I, is my real nature. We're going to study this in very, very great depth uh, in this text. And the central theme of this, you should never forget, is the I thought. Very beautiful analysis and a very beautiful uh, depth we can go in our own mind. This who am I inquiry is generally, it generally starts with the identification of ahamkara. Ahamkara means the I thought which is in our mind. This thought, we identify and we say, this is me. We call this as 
our real nature. This I thought is generally surrounded by many attributes and all our individuality is based on this I thought, this I notion in this body. And many a times seekers, they realize when they start meditating for some time, they realize that there is some, somebody talking inside my mind. Somebody is talking inside this body. Who is this? Many of us are absolutely baffled when we start listening to this voice inside us. There is a voice which is telling us the whole day what we are doing, what we should do, what we should not do, right from the morning we get up till the night we till in, uh, we go to sleep in the night there is a voice this voice can be heard this voice can be seen by yogis the yogis who have trained their mind through pranayama they're able to see the thought throughout the day they can never miss this thought i thought a yogi who has done pranayama, many of us in this class are, 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 are people who are doing yoga, they will realize that after some time they can be aware of the mind. So this I is the object of inquiry. And asking the question, who am I, leads to the self, the sense of I at a deeper, consciousness level we realize it is nothing but a sense of emptiness or nothingness that is what we call it as the seer the experiencer the sat principle pure existence pure consciousness all of us can reach that state it is not difficult. We, we, uh, as we go along, we will be able to realize what is the mind, which is the ahamkara part, and what is atma, which is other than the mind. An analysis of the difference between the two is the subject matter of sat darshana. Once this ahamkara understands this atma, then what happens is it realizes that this ahamkara has found its resting place. It need not go out to the objects and beings outside the body. This is a very beautiful discovery. Like you have a cow in a stable, suppose the grass is outside, it will keep on running away from the stable and will keep on uh, going outside to get the grass. But suppose you are an intelligent man and you take the grass and you cut the grass and it put, it put it inside the stable. Then the cow will eat the grass in the stable and it will not go out. So similarly, what Ramana Maharishi is saying is this I notion which is there in the body, in the mind, is like that cow. It wants to find a resting place so that it can rest eternally. Very important point. It is seeking a residence, body after body, we have taken several births according to the Upanishads and all of us are in search of that resting place for this ahamkara. In English, we call the ahamkara as the ego. It is an eternal search for finding the resting place to know where is that peace for that Atma.
for that ahankara. Our false identification of being someone, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, I am a student, I am a mother, I am a father, I am a brother, I am a son. All these identifications are belonging to ahamkara, the ego. And we conduct our entire life with this ego principle and we learn in this text how to drop this ego and look at who am I. Once we have found the Atma, the consciousness, the pure self, in which there is no I, which is our real state, which is our true nature, all of us can realize this in our meditation, it's possible. Uh, it, it's the knowledge which is missing that this is what is me. This I, the search of this I, is the search of the seeker. And it will stop only when it finds the resting ground. So this is a general introduction to what Sat Darshanam is going to talk about. Many, many texts are available uh, on Ramana, Ramana Maharishi's teachings. You can find it from the Ramana Maharishi Ashram in Trivandamalai. A lot of texts on his conversations with seekers are recorded. In the, in the YouTube, you can find some of these, some of these conversations. Goodman is a, a writer who has uh, written a lot of books on Ramana. Uh, before I get into the actual analysis of this text, I want to present the Om chart because this is the primary uh, chart we should understand to understand who am I. This Om in the chart the, the, uh, is referred as Supreme Consciousness. It's also said in Sanskrit as the Purusha. And uh, this Purusha is the pure consciousness, the pure I. That is what we are searching for. This is the I, which is the Atma I, the Om. It's also called by another name, Om. Then we come below. BMI stands for body, mind, and intellect. These are the instruments which we have and these instruments belong to us. The soul, the ahankara, has the instruments of the body, mind, and intellect. These are instruments. The body is an instrument, the mind is an instrument, intellect is the instrument for the jiva. And this jiva has got some impressions from the previous births. And these impressions are what we generally call as Karana Sharira. People who have done the Tattva Bodha text, in case you have not done it, I have five sessions, videos, which are available in, the, uh, which are available in YouTube. You can see them. But that's the fundamental text to explain this BMI chart. So there are certain impressions in our own Karana Shariram, which is called as the causal body. And this causal body is not visible. It is just a body of impressions which we are gathering from birth to birth, birth to birth. They are in unmanifest form and they are generally called also by another name, Prakriti or Maya, or they are also called as nature. 
my real my nature swabhavam so vasanas are gathered in every birth some of the vasanas some of the impressions are exhausted because we enjoy the punyam and papam that means we enjoy joy and sorrow in life so as we get, uh, as we exhaust our vasanas or the impressions in every days of the life what happens is the body mind and intellect is interacting with the objects emotions and thoughts that means body interacts the gross body is interacting with the objects outside the sense objects outside body has got sense organs and then it becomes the perceiver of the sense objects the mind has got feelings it is a feeler and it feels the emotions inside us the intellect is throwing up thoughts i am the doer i am the enjoyer i am the ego so the perceiver feeler and the thinker is the ego in us this is the culprit this is the this is our total identification who we are the pft in sanskrit it is also called as the pramata pramata means the perceiver of the external world karta karta means the doer and bhokta means the enjoy so the body mind and intellect are the equipments are the medium are the instruments i am the soul i am the jiva who is inside this body i become the ahamkara or the pramata the moment i get attached to the mind or the body or the intellect i am getting a new name that name i get is called as ahamkara as ahamkara i interact with the world outside world of objects and beings i also interact with my own emotions then i am also thinker i am also thinker i plan i i uh, i use my memory these are all thoughts which happen in me so this jiva which is now identified with the mind is a hero today all of us hero or heroine and this jiva is trying to discover who am i so when this interaction goes on with the world day after day year after year month after month and the it gives us results of joy and sorrow joy and sorrow at the end of any day if you sit back and realize each one of us will come to only two conclusions i had a good day i had a very bad day or a third alternative i had a mixed day not so good not so bad it goes on for 80 years 85 years 90 years 100 years of our life every day is like this and the day comes day goes we have no control over this waking dream and sleep states but the ahamkara is always there trying to find joy and sorrow in this universe this is our picture today a very beautiful chart designed by swami chinmayananda and whenever we are interacting with the world it's called as vyavaharyam vyavaharyam means transact transactions which gives karma phalam that means it gives me the result of my actions sukham and dukham sukham means joy dukham means sorrow so we have the prameyam prameyam means 
I, the objects, emotions, and thoughts are called as prameyam. They are object of consciousness. They are the objects for ahamkara. The I thought ahamkara has these as the objects. And throughout the day, the actions, the, the interactions are going on. And this pramata deals with the prameyam through the instruments of the pramanam, which are called as body, mind, and intellect. So if you have understood this chart, you will now realize that this ahamkara, that PFT, has to rise above the vasanas and discover who is this I without the impressions which are ruling our mind every day. There are impressions. How do you know whether there are impressions? All of us, we go to dream. In dream, what, do we, what, what, what is our experience? We all experience a different world. How do we experience the world? Because of thoughts in the mind, which are projected because of the nidra shakti, the sleeping power, which we all have, projects. It covers by nature of the waker, and it projects a dream world out of the impressions gathered during the waking hours. And it's all thoughts. The dream tiger, the dream bird, the dream stars, the dream car, the dream girl, the dream boy, everything is mind. And it's all impressions. The moment we wake up, we just say, oh, this was all nothing but my mind. And then it just collapses. What the rishis say is the same thing happens when this PFT, perceiver, feeler, thinker, I, ahamkara, realizes that the waking state of all objects, emotions, and thoughts is nothing else but one consciousness, which is called as OM. It happens the moment that ahamkara turns inwards and sees that the resting place for the ahamkara is this atma i pure consciousness it is not a doer of action it is not an enjoyer of the results of action it is not a changing thought nirvikara that means it is ever changeless it is always there, it's nityaha. Never changes, it's always there. Eternally it is there. As I, 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 right from the time you get up in the morning till you go to sleep, this I never leaves us. The pure existence consciousness, I, the real Atma is changeless, and it is that I notion in all of us. What is changing is the thoughts. The thoughts can be of the office, the thoughts can be of the family, the thoughts can be of a beautiful vacation we are planning, the thoughts can be of uh, uh, the puja which we have to do, the prayer we have to do, the thoughts can be of your, uh, the problems you are facing in, at home or uh, uh, or uh, in the surroundings, or it can be of the uh, uh, different types of situations outside. But they're all thoughts. All these thoughts are linked to one thought, which is called as the ahamkara I thought. Without this I thought in sleep, I don't have any sorrow. I don't have any joy. I don't have, I don't experience any objects in sleep. That means I can exist without the I ahamkara thought. That I, which exists by itself, independently without the body, mind, and intellect. Today, when we go to sleep, we feel that it's the body 
eye which goes to sleep but we don't know that it is the ahamkara eye which is sleeping but not the atma eye atma eye is awake when the mind is in passive condition very very beautifully described in the upanishads when we study the bhagavad gita and we study the upanishads and we try to put them together what happens is this ahamkara the mind understands that there is another real being in this body that being is the search of ramana maharishi so om or the pure consciousness without the body mind and intellect and the objects emotions and thoughts that means without the world without the body mind i have to discover who am i so please keep this chart before you when we are doing this entire 44 verses without this chart chart you will not you will be absolutely lost we have to intellectually drop our identification with the body mind and intellect and the world and without any other preoccupation in the mind we must listen to this 44 verses i am not a mother or a sister while listening to this session my mind is clear i am focused i am listening to what the teacher is talking ramana medeshi is trying to reveal our nature who is the listener the listener is this consciousness who is the speaker i am the speaker but it is the consciousness the power behind my tongue the power behind your ears is this reality which never changes which is existing all the time eternally which is why it is called as nitya it cannot be seen by the eyes that's why it is called as unmanifest beyond the unmanifest it is different than the matter it is pure spirit it is a spiritual being which is what i am so this search leads us to sat darshana sat stands for this om sat means pure existence and where does ramana maharishi get this word he gets it from the upanishads chandogya upanishad has this beautiful verse and it says sadeva saumya idam agre asi ekam eva advitiyam very important sentence what it says is the teacher in that upanishad is teaching the father the father is uddalaka sweta ketu is the son he is a he is a student and he is telling the his son that before this creation there was only existence pure existence one without a second very important word sat this is where the entire text gets the name sat darshana so this sat what is the description of this sat is it is without a second that is why it is called as advitiyam advitiya means there is no second with reference to this sat principle pure existence consciousness principle there is no second it alone is and this sat 
is what is the object of our study. From this sat, from this pure consciousness, the entire world is projected. Exactly like the dream, there exists in this universe all the time there is one principle, which is called as the Sat principle. And in this Sat principle, the entire world resolves. Every night when we go to sleep, the whole, our world, you see, you will say that the world may exist for people in America. No. When I'm talking about Sat Vidya, we are talking about that I consciousness which is in this body. So this I, for this I, the world springs up and the world goes in. The world springs up, it becomes manifest, it becomes unmanifest. And why do we say that the world resolves in sleep? You look at the second verse, the same chapter, sixth chapter of Chandogya Upanishad. In the eighth section, the first verse, Uddalaka, the father, the teacher, he says to his son, let me explain the concept of deep sleep. When a person is said to be sleeping, oh Saumya, he becomes one with Sat existence and he attains his real self. Very important sentence. This is the pramanam which we use. This is the pramanam which Ramana Maharishi knew. Did Ramana Maharishi have a guru? A lot of people, a lot of stories are asked. Generally, we say he was a yoga brishta. Yoga brishta means what? In the Bhagavad Gita, yoga brishta is described as a person who has received certain knowledge in the previous birth from a guru, but he could not realize his real nature for due to some obstacles in the previous birth, but in this birth, he realizes the true nature. So all the study which we do, suppose you ask me, oh, suppose I don't understand, I don't get this Atma. What happens to me? in the next birth. A lot of students have come and asked me this question again and again. They say, well, maybe I don't get this knowledge. What happens to me? Uh, does this all this knowledge which I have, does it go away? No, it doesn't. And the real proof of that is the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. It says the knowledge about Atma, whatever you have gained in this birth continues and it will continue in the next birth. Whether the body comes or not, well, it may come, it may not come. But even if the body comes, you will know that I am Atma. And then the, 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 the body mind will undergo its experiences, but you're not bothered about it because you know that you are the pure consciousness. Nothing affects the Atma. The pure consciousness does not get affected like the space. The space is not affected by anything in the creation. Even if there is an atom bomb, the space never gets polluted. The space remains the same. And space is caused by Atma. The cause never changes. The effect keeps on changing. So like space, which doesn't change, all other objects can change in the world, but not space. Like space, we have Atma, and therefore we say that as I get up in the morning, again my world comes out. Each one of us is experiencing a subjective world. This is what is now said by Ramana Maharishi. So what is the vision of truth of oneself and the world? The vision each one of us has depends on our sense organs. Our eyes see the world. 
when they see the world it gets likes and dislikes they come in the mind that is why we say advaitins follow drishti shrishti vada i'll just explain to you what this means there are two schools of thought science believes that there is a creation and consciousness is a part of that creation in the human brain that means creation is there srishti is there in that srishti the human being is born and then when the human being is born he sees and interacts with the world this is called as the one school of thought this is where we say srishti exists that means creation is there and then we experience this is the science where matter is pradhanam matter is the main and consciousness is a subset what vedanta says is completely opposite it says that there is srishti only because you are seeing it that is why it is called as drishti srishti bada this is very beautifully analyzed in a text called as vichara sagara very very beautiful text and it analyzes these two parts these two theories in very big depth so what we are saying here is what ramana maharishi is saying is my sense organs are perceiving a very limited world the world is so the cosmos is so big we none of us can realize or see or experience the what's going on in the whole universe each one of us is just having a limited knowledge of his surrounding what's happening in singapore what's happening in india what's happening in brazil there are some people today listening from brazil so each one of us is just in a small corner we know our world our subjective world our objective world that's all i know my emotions i know what i'm feeling i know my thoughts and i know all the objects around me whatever i hear the five sense organs are bringing the five sense objects into me and i say i am having an experience i am having a living that's all but the cosmos is huge so many galaxies so many planets so many stars we perceive only relative reality the version of truth which we experience is very limited not the absolute truth there is an absolute truth that is what ramana maharishi is teaching us absolute truth, truth means what it never changes right from the time the world was born till today the creation came and it is still existing the truth has not changed that truth is called as sat that truth is called as chit that truth is called as ananda sat chit ananda again it's coming from the upanishads called as taitri upanishad all these are the truths which are mentioned in our scriptures and the scriptures are the only source for the knowledge of sat of who i am in my real nature only source because the sense objects and the sense organs have no corridor to experience the truth the mind the sense organs cannot objectify the truth because here we are talking of the subject i the knower the consciousness principle which is my real nature generally we say that the world is nothing else but three things jiva jagat ishvara jiva means i the individual then jagat means the world and the ishvara means the creator of the world i have not created i find myself in the world 
I am born into this world. So there has to be some creator for this world. That is what we call as Ishwar. The moment we understand these three entities, Jiva, Jagat, Ishwara, then we can say our knowledge is complete. All the scriptures, whether it is Bhagavad Gita, whether it is Upanishads, whether it is Sadarshanam, whether it is Upadeshasara, you will find that all of them are analyzing three things. It's either Jiva, Jagat or Ishwar. And when we find answers to these three, that answer is called as Sat Darshanam. Sat Darshanam means the pure existence principle from where this whole world is springing up into which the whole world is dissolving. Kaivalya Upanishad, Mayeva Sakalam Jatam the 17th uh, mantra of that Upanishad, you can see that beautiful verse and you will know that it is this truth, this pure consciousness which we are talking about. Seeing without eyes and knowing without thoughts is Sat Darshanam. Seeing the truth is being the truth. That means the eyes are not involved the mind is not involved, but still you are able to know that I am the truth. I am that consciousness. That is the revelation of this text. It is the revelation of all the Upanishads. It is the same revelation in the Bhagavad Gita. Ramana Maharishi was knowing all this. He knew the essence and he is teaching us that essence in this period in which we all are existing in a very simple way he's teaching us very direct way also that is why he's a very very popular text this text is extremely popular among all the vedanta students in all the vedantic colleges universities where they teach vedanta whether it is in Coimbatore, whether it is in Bombay, whether, you know, in, in any of the schools where they teach you this pure spiritual science, they will take this text. As ego, I see myself as a human being in the waking state. As Sakshi, I am a pure being. I am not a human being, I am a spiritual being. These are the two differences we should try to understand when we are trying to understand who am I. I am not the ego with the body. I am the spiritual being which exists all the time. And it is understood and it is revealed only by the scriptures. I have to learn to drop this ego like I do in my sleep state and understand who am I. Why do we generally suffer is a question which all of us ask ourselves many a times. No human being exists without asking this question. Why am I suffering? Why am I having these problems in life? And uh, what Ramana Maharishi says is, it is due to the false vision of life, seeing ourselves as a reflection, not seeing ourselves as the original face. Seeing ourselves in a mirror. For example, if I'm looking, if a mirror is in front of me, the mirror is throwing up a reflection of me. So what is the ego eye? Ego eye, Ramana Maharishi says, is a reflection, is a reflection of this pure consciousness, of this pure sat, of this pure nature of which exists. This pure sat principle is the real self, the real 
existence principle, reflection is the false eye. The ego eye, which we all face in life, is the false eye. But can we stop this false eye? No, we cannot stop the false eye, but we can know that I am the original face, I am not the reflected face. Knowing he is not the reflection, the body or the mind, one is totally free from the sorrow and joys and enjoys unconditioned bliss. The joy and sorrow which we experience in life, the joy especially, the ananda, the, pure, the happiness which we experience in life, are only when there are favorable situations in our life. The moment the events outside become unfavorable, my happiness evaporates. But when I am knowing the Atma principle, I will know that this happiness or joy is an incidental, temporary experience. I know I am that pure consciousness, I am that pure Sat principle, which never changes, which is always there, it is Nityaha, it is immortal, it is Nirvikaraha, which is changeless. So, I learn to shift my attention from the Ahamkara I to the Sakshi I. This text has been written by Ramana Maharshi in Tamil language and it has been translated into Sanskrit by a very renowned uh, 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 Advaitic scholar called as Vasishta Ganapati Muni. In the 44th verse of this text, his name will come. Ramana revels in his inner experience of himself and the world here teaches us the method of inquiry. That means what the author, I mean, what Ganapati Muni says is, he says, I have only re uh, revealed what Ramana Maharishi has said in these 44 verses. And what is the method, just to put it again into, into another, uh, uh, into another uh, frame, Ahamkara is the fake Aham. It is not the real I. But I have to go through this throughout my life. It creates bheda. Bheda means difference. This ahamkara creates a difference between who I am, who, what is this world, and, who, and the difference between the creator, created, and me. And this difference is because of maya shakti. There is a Shakti in this world which is called as Maya. It is the Shakti which belongs to that Sakshi, the pure I. I am going to go beyond this Maya to understand my real nature. And this Ahamkara is what creates all sorrows in our life. So the first stage is to understand that there is a substratum for this Jiva, Jagat and Ishwar. This is the first stage. Then we come to Aham, the real I. When Ahamkara is destroyed by knowledge, that means when I come to know through the scriptures, through the study, I come to know that this false I is not my real I, but my real I is the pure consciousness which I am in my sleep state, which I was before this body was born, which I will be when the body goes away. That pure state is my real self. Then what happens is this vision which I get is called as Sat Darshan. Darshana means vision. Sat means reality. And that Sat 
means what it is a reality of what it is a reality of the entire realm of experience where jiva jagat ishvara triangular format exists so whenever i am seeing outside the world what do i realize after this sat darshanam sat vision i say well this world is there it will be there for the next 24 hours and it will go away when i when when i go to sleep it is not there it is not there for me and i am the real self i am the pure sat i am the pure consciousness in which the world disappears it resolves so the world the body mind sense organs and the world they have two conditions two states one is called as the manifest condition in which we are all living right now you are listening i am talking this is called as the manifest condition when we go to sleep what happens is this world in which i experience it goes into unmanifest condition but i continue as the as the pure sakshi the witness principle the experiencing principle why is it called sakshi and it is not called as the experiencer at that time because at that time the world is not there and who is experiencing the world it is the mind together with the reflection of this consciousness which is the experiencer which is the pramata which is the ahankara so what is the problem the problem is perception of jiva jagat ishvara as different than me the consciousness that is where the problem lies the moment i come to know through the scriptures that all these three they resolve into me the atma into me the consciousness this problem is resolved and my intellect learns to understand that there is a principle which is the ultimate principle the truth of this whole triangle the truth of this entire universe is nothing else but pure sat pure chit pure ananda sat and chit together is nothing but nothing but bliss so with that introduction so that was so far we have seen just introduction of who ramanavari maharishi was what was his essential teaching and what is the meaning of sat from the chandogya upanishad and what is the relevance of that in the sleep state all this gives us a background of the entire text what we are going to learn for those of you who want to have a quick glance of the entire 44 verses you can go to the index i have put in brief each verse what it is going to teach if you go back into the index i'll just show you where it is and you can see these are the ones if you see the index you will understand the meaning each verse i have put the meaning in short going through this index will take you not more than 5 minutes or 10 minutes you will get a glimpse of the whole text but we will go verse by verse so that you can understand the meaning in depth the first verse The first verse is a Mangala sloka. It is a remembrance of the Lord and the Sat principle itself. Every author, when he writes the text, he always remembers the Lord because he knows very well that I cannot write without that Shakti in me, and I am not the owner of that Shakti. There is some power in me, and therefore he prays to that. power and says let me remember you and here the best part of it is 
Ramana Maharshi remembers that Atma in himself. And what does he say? He says, Sat Pratyaya Kim no Vihaya Santam. No thought of existence I am is possible without the principle of existence, which is Ishvara. We can call it God principle, we can call it the Sat principle, they are the same. It is the same Sat which is in the Nirguna form, which I learn is appearing as the world outside with gunas. It is a one principle, which is a reality. And if I can remember that reality which are without the form, that is called as the nirguna form. Nirguna means what? Without gunas. Pure form. So without having that I in me, the pure existence, there is no world. The pure reality is located in the seat of consciousness. That means in me. So where do I have to search for, the, the, for this I in me, that I notion in me? I have to only, the only place where I can search where that God is, where that reality is, is in my mind. Nowhere else. There is no other place where God exists or the reality is there except in my mind. And that when I learn to see, see this is a vision. This is a Sat Darshanam. This is a totally different vision which I never knew. It is a, it is a, it's a complete uh, change in my own perspective about myself. It cannot be cognized by the mind. That's what he says in this first verse. But it can be remembered. By its remembrance alone, you will be seated firmly in the ultimate reality. Why does he say this? Think about it. Just now I said that in sleep state, you are that pure consciousness. But all of us right now, we are not in the sleep state. We are now in the waking state. In the waking state, it is possible to remember that Sakshi. It's possible for my mind to dwell on my sleep state and understand there was a principle which was existing in the sleep state, which was an observer of the sleep state of the mind, that same principle is what I am trying to remember in my waking state. When I do that, what happens? I am seated firmly in the ultimate reality. This process of remembrance is very beautifully described by Shankaracharya in Dakshinamurti Stotram in a word which is called as Pratyavigna. Pratyavigna means remembrance. Unless and until there was somebody who was present in the sleep state, existing and observing in the sleep state, you cannot know, you cannot remember that in the waking state. It is the same principle which is there, which was there and which is also there now. That linking factor is called as Sakshi. It's the same factor which exists in the dream state also. There is a Sakshi, there is a pure consciousness which exists in all the three states. Waking, dream and sleep, there is one Sakshi. That Sakshi is called as Sat Darshanam. That Sakshi is called as Sat Pratyaya. Objects in the world, they have existence. But existence is not an object. It is the subject. 
Existence cannot become non-existence. Very important rule. If we can say that the chair is existing, the table is existing, the waking state is existing, the dream state is existing, the sleep state was existing, all this we say existing, 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 we can all say only when we are the Sakshi. Sakshi cannot go out of existence. You can never, you, 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 can you think of a time when you were not existing? Each one of us, just look into your own mind. Is there a time when I can know I was not existing? It's not possible. Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says the same thing. Nasato vidyate bhavaha, na bhavo vidyate sataha, ubhayo rapi drishtontaha, tvanayosta tattva darshibihi. Second chapter, 16th verse. What does it say? Unreal has no existence. That means existence is always there. I, the Sakshi, am always there. There is no non-existence of the real. This is what Ramana Maharishi is saying in the first verse. That means the Sakshi never goes out of existence. The body mind is not experienced in the sleep state. Therefore, we say it is not existence in the sleep state. In the dream state, this waking uh, objects and the waking world is not there. But in the dream state, in this uh, uh, sleep state, there is a Sakshi. That Sakshi knows the truth of existence and non-existence. It is the seer, it is the essence. It was revealed as Sakshi in chapter 2 of Bhagavad Gita. Ramana Marishi is saying the same thing in verse number 1. He's saying the same Sat and Chit principle. Sat Pratyaya is what I am remembering right now. I can dwell into a mind. The mind has got the Shakti. Nobody can say that I can't know my Atma because Ramana Maharishi is clearly saying, I can know who I am. I am the pure consciousness. It is the invariable factor in me. Changeless. Never changing. That is why each one of us feels the same throughout our life. I was 10 years old, I am the same. I was the same Sakshi. When I was 24 years old, I was the same Sakshi. There is something in me which has not changed. My body has changed. I was not so fat, I was not so thin, now I am opposite. I had gray hair, I had gray hair, I had black hair, I had no hair. The body has changed. Mind, oh my God, it changes every minute. Emotions change. All these are all happening. They are all, they are all observing. We are all knowing this. The knowing factor is called as consciousness. Knowing factor is called the changeless factor. But the principle of existence is one unchanging principle. So what we have to do is we have to give up this name and form, identification with the name and form all the time. Yes, we go through emotions every day. We go through uh, life's experiences every day. We take it in our stride. We take all our experiences and say, yes, they are all there, but they are all passing, incidental. But what never changes is my real nature, which is sad. Ridhi eshaha chinta, existence in the mind experienced as consciousness. So existence is outside in the whole universe. But when it comes to the mind, in the mind it is experienced as what? Consciousness. Outside it is called as existence. The same principle when I am looking at my own thoughts, the same principle is called as consciousness. Who is aware of all the thoughts every day? Who is, the, who is aware of the emotions? I was very angry. I was very sad. 
I was very jealous. I was I had so many problems today. Who is aware? That aware never changes. That aware is called as Sat. The moment I become aware of that awareness principle in me, I have got Sat Darshanam. This Sat, this pure consciousness illumines all thoughts itself remaining free from thoughts. Very beautiful analysis of Ramana Maharishi. What he says is, this Sat never changes. This Sat which I'm experiencing in this body, this consciousness which I'm experiencing in my mind is a reflected consciousness. It never changes. Thoughts change. Isness experienced as I, I exist independent of thoughts. This is where we have to focus. And this is where Ramana Marishi says, as we learn to practice that I am, that pure consciousness existence, which is always there, the more I practice to be away and claim this I consciousness as my real nature, the more my ego, the ahamkara I, which interacts with the world, it loses its power. The more it loses its power, what happens is I become more conscious about my real nature. Katham smara tam ameyam ekam. Truth is one with me. It cannot be remembered like I remember the objects of the world. Objects of the world I can remember and I can forget. That is called as the worldly thoughts. But the truth which is free from the thoughts, it can never be remembered or forgotten because it is me. Therefore, we should try to understand when we go in meditation, when we try to go deeper in our thought process, you must understand that there are, there are certain type of thoughts which come and go. For example, if I look, what did I, what, 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 do, what happened to me when I was 10 years old on a particular day? I may not remember. What happened to me last week, two weeks back, I don't remember today. Lord Krishna says, this remembrance and forgetting is my, is my, uh, is my glory. So if you forget, it, it is not your glory, but it is the Lord's glory. Many a times we say, I have very poor memory. Don't worry, because this is not your problem. It is the nature, prakriti. This is how the Lord created the universe. If you and I were to remember every little experience which we have had in our life, we would be sleepless throughout our night. Thus, so, tasya spriti tatra dhridaiva nishtha. That means I hold on firmly to this atma or the consciousness principle as the truth. And as I learn to abide in this truth, I am the substratum for all the thoughts in my mind. I am not only the substratum of the thoughts, I am also the substratum of all the objects, all the perceptions which come into my mind, all my experiences. This Atma is supposed to be the, the holder of all these experiences. I am not talking of the experiences. Experiences is all with Ahamkara. Ahamkara is uh, throughout the day it is having experiences. So now I am trying to learn the difference between Atma and Anatma. Anatma means what? It means not I, not self. There is only one principle which is called as pure consciousness or pure sat, or in the, we can also in Upanishadic language we call it Brahman. 
So this Brahman pure consciousness, pure Sat, which we all experience in our sleep, what is it? It is without objects outside. It is without the thoughts inside. That is what we call it as Sat. One existence principle, one consciousness principle together is called as Sat. Existence, consciousness together, there is one word which is called as Sat Chit Ananda. Objects may be divided, but not existence. That means space, in space there are objects, but space is not divided. All objects in space, the you and I, we look different. I see differences in the bodies because the eyes are reporting the difference, but in the truth, actually speaking, the whole world is only one pure consciousness. That is what Ramana Marishi is telling us in the first verse. Try to abide in that self. The spontaneous remembrance of this divisionless Sat principle is the Adhisthana, is the substratum of this entire universe, which consists of the whole universe we can just say it in three words in sanskrit jiva jagat ishvara that's all there is nothing else you if you look at the whole universe any part of the universe you can put into any of these three that's all either it is the world which is the insentient objects or it is a sentient jiva plant human animal they're all sentient so it's a world can be divided into sentient or insentient that's all and who is the creator? There is a creator. There is one powerful force which is creating this. So in the first verse, what we have learned is there is something called as Sat. There is something called as pure existence. And Ramana Maharishi is remembering that self and saying, I remember you, I bow down to you, and I am writing this text of 44 verses. The second verse, <clears throat> we'll probably do one or two verses and then we'll stop for the day. The second verse is uh, talking about what are the identifications which we have and why do we take refuge in God? Is there anything beyond death? What happens during death? These are the questions he is trying to answer. So he is saying, the fear of death is natural. Who is dying? Ahamkara. Who is not dying? Atma. What is going into non-existence is Ahamkara, that I notion. We all have the individuality, it is only in our mind, that's all. Our individuality is nothing else, I am Krishna, I am Rama, I am Rohit, I am so and so. This is all only in our mind. Our individuality is only in our own mind, that's all. And we live the whole, whole of our life with that individuality. That individuality is what goes into non-existence, but it, 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 we all experience this in our sleep state. There's nothing new. Death is nothing else but another long sleep till we find another body and again come back to this world. Or we get the freedom. These are the only two possibilities. We get the freedom. The freedom comes by knowledge, knowledge of who I am. I am that pure consciousness. I am that Atma. If I know that knowledge, there is no fear of death. There's no fear of any change. Because I am already experiencing it, that I am that Atma. That's what Ramana Maharishi is trying to say. Learn to understand that you are not the Ahamkara. This will be very beautifully mentioned in verse number 20. Till then you will not, you will not understand uh, till verse number 26. In 26th verse, very, very beautiful verse, the central verse of this whole 44 verses in the 26th verse, where he describes what is this ahamkara? 
how do how can i pinpointedly say that this is my wrong self and this is my right self so the fear of change is there therefore we fear death but how to remove this fear of death that's what is being explained here what he says is by knowing this satchit principle which is deathless which is birthless see deathless we can understand but it is also birthless that we will know only from the scriptures the proof that atma is birthless deathless bhagavad gita chapter 220th verse na jayate mriyate va kadachit nayam bhutva bhavita na bhoya ajo nityam shashvato purana na anyate anyamane sharire very beautiful verse the same principle we are talking there also is the same satchit principle you can see the linkage between sat darshanam bhagavad gita upanishads they all talking of one essence so if i surrender to, if i learn to surrender to that sat principle i will lose my identity into him my bhaga vyavaharika satyam is the cause of this fear that means the ego is having the fear i learn to surrender this ego to that self that ishwara that consciousness that sat principle in the same body and that is how the fear of death goes ramana maharishi is teaching us how to be immortal while we are living and what he is saying in the second verse is teaching in the second verse is i am that immortal self how can there be any death for this immortal self this is he is saying because of the strength of the upanishadic literature teaching which he has got and who is fearful like i said ahamkara is the one which is identifying with the body and is trying to look at the body as the self and is saying i am dying but this ahankara through this knowledge of sat darshanam is learning to say i am atma therefore surrendering this ahankara to the lord inside my body which is the pure self which never dies or gets born also okay does it get born no see these are all things which we should remember while learning this teaching that is why i said when you come into the class when you come to listen to this sat darshanam keep all the roles which you play outside you're not a mother you're not a father you're not a student you're not anything you are a pure spiritual being understanding who am i then is then alone it will be possible to grasp this teaching and own up the teaching i want each one of you to understand that i am atma before we finish the 44 verses each one of you should say i have learned my real nature ramana maharishi is very very powerful teacher he was a bhakta of lord shiva and we all know this markandeya story where markandeya hugs lord shiva and he gets rid of his fear from death even in katha upanishad it says that those who who know that they are atma for them that means for a brahmana and a kshatriya the moment they know that they are atma then the body becomes nothing else but it becomes like the rice or a pickle or something for eating with this we will stop today uh, let me see if there's one more slide yeah okay there's one last slide here what are the steps to realize this sat principle there are four steps the first thing we should remember is this sat principle exists 
And when I know this sat, that pure consciousness, pure existence, when I know that principle itself, that will destroy what? It will destroy the ignorance which this ahamkara has. Ignorance is a problem for all of us. Ignorance means what is called as mula avidya. It's a Sanskrit term. It means that I don't know my real nature as the pure consciousness. And if I come to know that I am the pure consciousness and I am learned to abide in it, then it will destroy this ahamkara. The I notion will get slowly destroyed. It doesn't mean that you, uh, once the ahamkara gets destroyed, you'll not do. You'll, you'll be like a vegetable. No. There is a samanya ahamkara which is created by God. It will never go away from the body. That is called a samanya ahamkara. The visesha ahamkara is a problematic ahamkara. That is what will get dropped. The one which creates worry in us is the visesha ahamkara. That attachment to that I in this will get destroyed the moment my mind knows and learns again and again, listen to the scriptures, the more we listen to the scriptures, the more this ahamkara gets weakened. When this happens, the third step happens, which is called as bheda bhava. Bheda means differences. I mean, my mind slowly will say the whole world is in any way is one consciousness principle. I am not worried. I don't have any fear. And this difference, the bheda, once it gets destroyed, I will be free from mortality. My fear of death goes away. And then what happens? Aham alone rem remains. In short, ahamkara gets destroyed by knowledge of atma. And the more I get to remember my atma again and again as the consciousness principle, which is not changing from morning to night. The whole day I was conscious, I was conscious, I was conscious. I was existing and I was conscious. In between what happened? I had emotions. In between I had some fights. In between I had some happiness, happy thoughts, bad thoughts, wrong thoughts. You know, all this is comes and goes, incidental. I am not bothered at all. It will come, it will go. Whether I live 120 years, whether I live whatever day, till my last day, these thoughts will come and go. This is the nature of this creation, which is called as prarabdha karma. It will come and go. It is, belongs to the body. It doesn't belong to atma at all. Okay, so we will stop here and uh, we will uh, start next week on Wednesday at the same time and um, uh, we'll continue with Sadarshanam. Just two announcements. One is about uh, uh, Gita, which is uh, Bhagavad Gita classes, which are starting on Saturday. Those of you who are interested can just join that group. Uh, you all have received the, uh, uh, the notice about that. Most of you have already joined. I've seen that. Uh, and if you are interested, you can join. That's, uh, uh, that's on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. in India and 6 p.m. in Singapore. And, uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, and for Brazil, you can calculate for those who are uh, listening. Uh, the second announcement is regarding, uh, we have another group, which is called as the Divine Quotes Group. Quote, uh, quotations of Ramana Maharishi, uh, we have a lot of our students, uh, a lot of our participants of this group. Uh, we have uh, been uh, circulating this of different authors, uh, uh, Ramana Maharishi, Naisargadatta, Ikhad Toll, then uh, so many other. If you are interested in joining that group, I will, uh, Shandugam is a coordinator. Uh, uh, he will be sending out, he is based in India, he will be sending uh, us uh, link, if you want to join that, every day some, some quotation or the other keeps on coming. 
Shanmugam has just uh, uh, sent that quotation of divine quotes to all of you by WhatsApp. You can just join the group if you are interested. You will get some quotations daily. Uh, this quotations uh, group was formed by uh, T.V. Murli and also Jacqueline. Jacqueline lives in Singapore. Uh, Murli is from India. They both together along with other few people, they have formed this group. Very interesting group. Uh, so this is another side, another side group which is there in our uh, overall uh, Vedanta students program. There's one more group, but uh, that's called as a conversations group. I will introduce that as we go along. It is for those people who have got questions, and they, there are a lot of uh, 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 scholars in our team who answer those questions. It's called as a, uh, the conversations group. Uh, if you're interested, again, uh, we will send you some link uh, about the conversation group, maybe tomorrow. You can join that, but the only problem there is there could be a lot of disturbances because uh, there will be uh, questions, answers, questions, answers in that group. So decide first whether you would like to be disturbed or not. Uh, but it's a very interesting group also. You can take your time, you can join later. With that, I close today uh, the, the class. And um, if you have any questions, maybe I can answer the questions after the closing prayers. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Gurupyo Namaha Hari Om We'll see if there are any questions in the... There are one or two questions. Uh, yes, somebody is asking, uh, Raghava Chaitanya is asking, is uh, a recording available for this? Yes, the recording will be available. And uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will circulate the recording every week at the end of uh, the session, maybe after one or two days, you will get the recordings by WhatsApp and also by email. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, yes, Shama? Oh, you are muted. Uh, one minute, let me ask. Uh, Shanmugam, can you unmute everybody? Yeah, Shama, you are asking question? Yeah, can you speak? Namaste, Shekhaji. Yeah, Namaste, Shama, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, no, obviously, very, very interesting and uh, is a very basic uh, question in Vedanta about the, how to attain the, your own real Swarupa, Satchit Ananda student. The question which I have is, when and why does the inquiry start? You know, because you, when I trace back, and quite many of us, we do this, when we approach this question and then we leave it off, when we approach it and then we leave it off. And I'm not able to understand when and why, how does the inquiry begin? You know, when are we, the cloud seems to, cloud of ignorance. Yeah, uh, that's a good question, uh, uh, Shama. The, the, this question only arises when we have problems of in life. Uh, Murdoch Upanishad says a very simple uh, verse there. It says, Pariksha Lokan. That means, then I look at my life and I see that there, are, there is nothing else in this life except joy and sorrow. Uh, at that time, I ask a question to myself, is there anything in life? Mm -hmm. When that question comes to a seeker, that then the seeker hood is born. That is the time when you, you will start asking, 
who what, what is the what is the purpose of all this life like once you mentioned what is the what what what, what even if i'm able to uh, buy the entire oxford street in london yeah uh, do i get the joy i mean will i be fulfilled in life will i get the uh, happiness which is uh, going to be permanent happiness is it because all of us are searching for only one thing in life which is nitya sukham permanent happiness if you ask anybody he will say yes i want to be happy throughout my life and i don't know where to look for this happiness and that is where the search begins that is where ramana marish teachings will come into existence but do you not believe that when we are as children i feel we are quite in our purified state sattva yeah. state and uh, we can remember really like uh, sort of being very aware of these very fundamental questions and then of course you go through this process of education where the knowing itself becomes our unknowing you know where we are being told or oh, be yourself and then in order to be yourself you're exploring all sorts of dimensions about you need to be this you need to be that and very idealized and very high values attached so that you are for so long you are just in that whole process the mad process of uh, oh i want to be this or i want to be that which is not purely vyavaharika but it is the idealistic version of uh, how uh, good or great you want to be and yes. also that you realize it has no meaning yes you are right so whenever we get this uh, you know that's why we say there are four goals in uh, life four purusharthas dharma artha kama and moksha so unless you have gone through dharma artha and kama the first three stages of life yeah and then you will know that there is no meaning to this dharma artha kama <laughs> so you have so to go through it yes so have there is no choice you have to go through the three, first three goals of life yes. to understand that there, there is no purpose behind these three goals we, we are as, as we as we get to know more of, more uh, about this atman self we finally have our mind actually the mind in that proper resting place as you have used this word couple of times resting place in the knowledge of the atman yes the moment the mind finds that yes this is the place where i can rest right then the real teaching begins and then ramana maharshi takes over and says come on i will teach you how to how to be, abide in it so it's, it's almost like a return home journey so yes it's home. absolutely it's a return home journey for the mind okay thank you thank you uh dr surendra uh, he is asking if the prarabdha karma belongs to the body or the prakriti prarabdha karma always belongs to body the body has got each one of us has got three shariras three bodies the sthula shariram which is the gross body which is made up of food which we eat that sthula shariram is what is given off at the time of death the sukshma shariram the second body which consists of the prana the 17 organs which we have studied in the tatvavoda mainly which is a punch up uh, uh, the five jnana indriyas five karma indriyas the five pranas and the mind together this this group of uh, subtle body all this is grouped together which is called a subtle body that one leaves the gross body it leaves how does it leave like it leaves in the sleep state in the sleep state what happens the bo gross body is uh, uh, lying in the bed but the subtle body is the uh, is away from this uh, from the gross body so nothing happens to the body is uh, uh, once it dies it just burnt or it's buried that's all nothing happens to you then what happens there is another body that is called as the karana shariram which is the causal body that causal body is what it has got the the sukham and the dukham the impressions that is what is called as the one which is carrying the impressions again and again you take different bodies because that is still on as long as that is on this body will come again again and again 
So the prarabdha karma, it belongs to the uh, causal body, not even to the sukshma sharira. Sukshma sharira will only get the, the, uh, the impressions again and again. It will have experiences based on the karana sharira. The mind will get the thoughts. For example, today you have great thoughts. And you suppose you have had a good day today. That means what? Your experiences of your prarabdha karma has given you the result of a good day. That means you had punyam today. Suppose you had a very bad day today and everybody scolded you and you were having a very annoying day. That means your punyam has come through in the form of thoughts. All of our punyam and papam are experienced only by way of thoughts. The, the moment you understand that it is my, it is nobody is responsible for all this. The other beings and objects are only the media through which I experience my joy and sorrow. That's all. It is my own uh, cause. I am the cause of all my experiences. So the body is destroyed with death, but the prarabdha karma is carried on to the next life. How does it carry? It is carried away like the, in Bhagavad Gita, it says very beautifully, like the wind carries the fragrance of a flower. Suppose you're walking in a garden and then you suddenly, you, you, you smell all the rose flowers. The wind is carrying the fragrance of the, of the flowers. Similarly, the fragrance of the Karan Shariram is carried on to the next body. This is how Bhagavad Gita describes. The, the Sukshma Shariram gets carried like the wind carries the fragrance. There is absolutely no problem at all. This is such a beautiful creation of the Lord. It's a natural process. It happens like the sun rises every day. You know, it's a natural process. The rain falls. COVID comes, COVID goes. You know, all this is a na some natural phenomena which is happening. So this is how the prarabdha karma is described. Then Vijaya from Thailand, she's asking, is Mumukshutvam emerges out of the Pariksha Lokan and uh, feeling of dejection from my experience? Right? Yes, you're right. Pariksha Lokan gives the birth of a Mumukshu. Mumukshu means what? His desires to know the Atma. He is desiring to know, is there any other goal in life? And the Shastras are teaching us, yes, there is a goal of life, and that goal is freedom from your mind's problems. That Pariksha Lokan will, is the first step for all of us to start this spiritual journey. Very beautifully, Shankaracharya says in his commentary in Mundok Upanishad, his, 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 you just read his commentary on Pariksha Lokan, Shankaracharya's commentary in Mundok Upanishad. Very beautifully, he says, uh, Mumukshu means he is born the day he realizes that this whole universe of experiences of joy and sorrow is not the ultimate purpose. Our purpose in life is to know that we are immortal. Your second part of the question is, if so, materialistic life creates or experiences, man never gets tired of experiences. Yes. See, the sense gratification is there. No doubt it is there, because that is how this creation is. Now, the sense gratification, the question which you have to ask is, is this gratification permanent or not? Is this gratification real or unreal? My gratification was, was there at the time of the sense objects and the sense organs were in contact. Matras parshas tu kaunteya shitosna sukadukkara. The 15th verse of the chap second chapter of the Gita. Very clearly says that the sense organs and the sense objects are inter interacting, but their interaction is not permanent. Therefore, I will never be happy with any experience in life. It will be there for some time, it will go away. So 
once I realized that these experiences are anityam, and there is a nitya sukham which the shastras are promising by the knowledge of atma, let me try it out. Let me try, give it a try. The moment you start saying that, you become a seeker. Prarabdha karma, I hope I've answered uh, Vijay. Then the next question is from Surya. Prarabdha karma is specific to birth. It won't carry forward from one birth to another birth. Okay, Prarabdha karma, what happens is one particular group of sukham and dukham get exhausted in this birth. But then there is a sanchita karma in my bank balance. So what happens is Prarabdha gets fructified in one birth. So you are right that they are not carried. But what gets carried is Agami and Sanchita. Like a fixed deposit, a part of the fixed deposit gets matured this year. The, the total fixed deposit in the bank is still there. And then yeah, I have yeah. added some more uh, deposit this year, or during, my, uh, during this year. So what happens is the next year, the uh, deposit which is matured is the Prarabdha Karma. The Sanchita Karma is the old deposit which will continue in the future. And the new deposit is called as the Agama. Agama. Uh, so wh what carries on is the Sanchita Karma, which is what is Agami Karma and Sanchita carries on to the next part. Uh, Sajib a very uh, sincere student of our group says Ramana Maharishi's method of attacking the hamkara is very beautiful. I agree with you. It's uh, such a great text. I can't tell you. It's uh, You see the analysis in, uh, from the verse number 20 onwards. You'll be floored and you'll see that, uh, you know, uh, the, there was a very beautiful uh, debate which we had uh, in, during one of our sessions was, is fate powerful or is free will powerful. We had that debate in our conversations and that is being answered in this text. And uh, uh, you see the answer when we come to that. Uh, Venkatesh is saying uh, is in right bars of a current age. Yes, you're right. And a very simple and authentic teaching. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, Venkatesh is a direct method of realization. I like his style of writing in such a simple way he writes. It's easy Sanskrit. It's you know uh, uh, you can easily follow the Sanskrit, and uh, it's a direct method. That's the that's a beauty, and uh, and he's of the modern times. You see, the problem is uh, he's he's from our times, so we can relate to him. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Surinder, you have brought out a very beautiful uh, uh, verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Shariram yadam apnoti yacha pikramati ishwaraha grihit vaitani sanyati vayur gandhani vashaya. Very beautiful verse. This is the verse which says that like the fragrance uh, carries is carried by the wind, the entire subtle body is carried to the next body. Uh, uh, this is the eighth verse of the uh, of the fifteenth chapter. Oh, there are a lot of questions today. I think a lot of uh, new people have come in also. So yeah, Matras Parshastri has also been uh, put up. Uh, I think most of the students are very energetic and they are sharing so many things. Uh, in the steps to realize such principle. Uh, could you repeat step three or Bheda Bhava? I missed some parts in my notes. Okay. Yeah, Rohit, Bheda Bhava, the first step, as I said, is that you, you, the first step is to know that there is Atma, there is a Sat principle. Then the second step is what? After knowing that there is an existence principle, then you should learn that there is Ahamkara. The second step is to know about this Ahamkara. Now, what is the role of this ahamkara? The biggest role the ahamkara plays is it creates a difference between me, the body, the world, and the creator. Now, this is a natural process in order to fulfill our prarabdha karma. Oh, yeah. 
See, the creation is designed to fulfill prarabdha karma. That means uh, uh, enjoy, uh, have sukham, dukham, sukham, dukham. So in order to have this sukham and dukham, unless and until a jiva is there in this body, the soul is there in this body, it is having a reflection of the consciousness, which is the life principle. Together with the mind, it becomes the ahankara. Okay, so reflected consciousness, the mind in this body becomes the ahankara, the jiva, to enjoy sukham and dukha. Mm. So this is the second step. Third step is what? Because of the second step, there is a bheda bhava. That means in my mind, I think I am different than the world. I am different than the creator of this body. But what the, what the Vedanta is teaching is, actually speaking, there is no difference. This body is a seeming difference. It's got a seeming difference because in that sleep state, I don't experience the difference. So the third step is to drop this bheda bhava. I drop this difference in this experiences which I have. And then what happens is once I drop the bheda bhava, my ahamkara gets dissolved. The ahamkara survives till the bheda bhava continues. That means throughout the waking state, my bheda bhava is there. Bheda means difference. I am different than the world. I am different than the other beings. I am different than the objects of the world. This is a vyavaharika satya. It is a transactional field in which alone I see the difference. But this transactional field gets destroyed the moment I go to sleep. That is why Ramana Maharishi and all the Rishis are asking, who am I? Am I this transactor in the waking state? Am I the one who is experiencing no transactions in my sleep state? What is the reality? So the fourth state is, I learn to drop that differences and then claim I am that Atma, which has got no difference in it. There is no Sajatiya Beda, Pijatiya Beda, Swagata Beda. At least these are the, there is no difference at all. It is divisionless consciousness. The moment I, 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 I learn to say that, that is the final state, and that is called as the Sat Darshanam. So be, having the vision of that Sat itself is being the self. That is what he says in the future verses. Having that vision, you know, suppose you uh, remember that state, in the waking state you remember, who was I? What was I in my sleep state? I had ignorance about my waking nature. Yes. But then who was, who was I? I had no knowledge. I had exactly like I forgot in my dream state, I forgot my waking state. But the problem is in waking state, I'm forgetting that I am Atma. That is what is the text. That is what is the fourth step. Remembering that nature of mind gives me the benefit of freedom. Freedom from ahamkara. Uh, I am aware of my feel. Uh, Rohit, have I answered your question? Uh, yes, you have, Shirdi. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to the next. I, uh, uh, Vijay is asking. I am aware of my feelings and emotions and candidly wash them. Excellent but unable to stay put in that status. Yes. This is where Ramana, uh, Sakshi does not come front always. Yes. See, the Sakshi is something, is knowledge. And it will come only when I learn by practice. Like I learn to pedal a cycle. Like I, I learn how to, uh, uh, how to drive a car. Uh, how to do cooking, how to uh, uh, stitch a uh, uh, shirt or a uh, blouse. So this is by practice. So in, in, uh, Rama, in Ramana Maharishi, what he says is that learn to tell yourself again and again, I am a Sakshi, I am a Sakshi. 
I'm a sakshi of my thoughts. So get this uh, repetition done in your mind. And the more you repeat, this knowledge will stay firm. And that is called as nishka. The more you learn to say this sakshi, aham sakshi asmi. I am that sakshi. And you are getting to know, uh, be aware of your feelings only because you have started analyzing yourself. The more you analyze yourself, this thought will keep on coming again and again. I am aware of my feelings. Okay, the moment I become, uh, any time I am disturbed, immediately I come to know. That is called this, this awareness of the feelings is nothing else but it is Sakshi Bhava. You can only say, I know my feelings. I know I am Sakshi. You can never say, I will realize my Sakshi because you are trying to make it an object. Yes. Don't make Sakshi an object at all. Only claim it as the subject. That's all. Most of us, we make a mistake. Oh, I must realize that pure Sat principle as I am. Why I am not able to realize it? The moment you try to realize it, you make it an object. And you will never be able to do it because that happens to the subject I. It is into that consciousness, that subject I, the whole world is disappearing every day. And that subject I consciousness is from where the whole universe and my body, mind, everything is being projected from that consciousness. The only way to realize this is claiming that I am that Sakshi. I am that Sat. I am that Chit. That is the Sat Darshana. That is the vision of truth. Claiming is called as vision. Here the vision doesn't mean I see the, see the, uh, see the uh, uh, Sakshi or Sat as, uh, as another object. Here Darshana means knowledge understanding like we cannot see our own face yeah. yes you cannot see your own face what uh, we see is only reflection only yeah. yes you're right does, the, uh, does this knowledge also sort of takes us to that advaitin uh, state of mind which is the drishti shishti vada which means yes, you, you have set your mind on to what is it that I am looking? You know, yes. The drishti shishti. So you actually set your whole mind computer on that setting. This yes. is what I am looking. This is what That's I am right. seeing. The, the, yeah? This is called so, as drishti shishti vada. That means if you don't see, there is no existence of the yeah. world. Yeah. You see, therefore you say the world is. If you yeah. don't see, that means drishti will decide shishti. Yeah, and so this it is, is not, almost like your remembrance. Yes, it? your remembrance. But what you're saying is, I am remembering my Atma even in the waking state. Okay, yeah. Wonderful. Very beautiful uh, 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 Drishti Srishti Vada. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I know. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shekharji. Thank you. And uh, uh, we'll say, I think it was a very interesting session today. We'll see how it goes next week. And uh, thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.